we'd all love to be living the dream, earning a crust from the things we're passionate about. Well, our next story is about someone who's doing just that. Except his dream is more like most people's eight-legged nightmare. The world is full of spiders and spider stories, especially Australia. Australia is really different. Here, we've got 4,000 described species of spiders, but we estimate there's probably around about 20,000 altogether. So many more undescribed than there are described. And it's a real kick getting out there and finding a new species, which isn't that hard. I'm Robert White, and I'm a Spider-Man. Not in the sense of having superpowers, but I'm fascinated by spiders. And I think they get a bad rap. But I've learned that they're not harmful. They're amazing animals. And this is the story about how I became a spider expert. This is a golden orb weaver. It's a very gentle spider, Nephila plumapes. And this is the female. And the male is over here in the outskirts of the web, and it's tiny. And when they're mating, you can really see the size differences. But it works for them. And over here, something even smaller, a tiny little kleptoparasite that lives in the web and steals the food from the golden orb weaver. It all started here at the junction of Fish Creek and Inogra Creek in Brisbane's west. A friend of mine, Mark, and I decided we wanted to do something for the environment. And the creek was a mess. And we hacked into the weeds, planted. I pulled 117 shopping trolleys out of that pond just up there. And I kept on noticing spiders. And they were great to photograph because they didn't fly away. And I wanted to identify them. And through connections, I came into contact with our great spider expert at Queensland Museum, Dr. Robert Raven. One day I took him a jumping spider and he said, I have no idea about that one, it's not my group. And so he said, the nearest expert is in Poland. <laughs> I realised then that uh, I'd have to learn about jumping spiders myself. They've got enormous eyes and when you photograph, you know, the eyes follow you around the room, so to speak, and their heads can swivel. They have eyesight, which is nearly as good as ours, they, and also it magnifies. They've got telescopic vision. They can walk around outside the line of sight to their prey and jump and land directly on it. We don't know how they do that. Here we've got a cyclosis species. It's got a decorative stablamentum, little pattern in its web that's used possibly to scare predators or maybe attract its prey. And in North Queensland, they've got ones like this one over here, except bigger, that makes the pattern of debris look like a giant spider. I'll get it to move. I'll just touch it. You see it move like that? That's where the spider is. It's clinging to that debris there. And over here, there's a tent web spider. There's a lot around at the moment. It's got an incredible architecture of its web. Very detailed. This place here is special for a couple of reasons. Down here in the creek bed, we've got the carex. It's like a poster child for what a revegetation should look like. Binding the surface down there and uh, nestling in amongst the rocks, it allows fish to live amongst that. This is when I discovered the blue orb weaver. I was walking along and up there in that tree, there was a big web and in it, there was a blue spider. I sent a photograph to the Queensland Museum and they said, we need that for the collection. I think that was a turning point for me. I went from being a photographer to a collector for the Queensland Museum. found my favourite spider. It's known as the alien butt spider. 
those two blobs on the back, they really look like alien eyes. You can see how it got its name. Alien butt spider. Just a fantastic name and a fantastic spider. Its real name is Araneus praesignus, which is Latin for outstanding orb weaver. It's a beauty. This is an area in the fork between the two creeks. I call it the island. But this is my favourite spot for collecting spiders. Now, I know which spiders are dangerous and which ones are not, but if you don't, be very careful. Now, let's see what we've got. That's a spider. That's sure to be a new species because that group is very understudied. I've discovered that there are many more spiders in remnant bushland than there are in the weeds. And when there are more spiders, it means there's more of everything because spiders eat insects and other arthropods. So you can attract spiders with native plants in your garden and have a more resilient garden and fewer pests. The main thing this has taught me in terms of life is how important it is to get people into the natural environment so they appreciate it, so they value it, so they think it's worth saving, so they care about it enough to stop people from wrecking it. Thank you.